What's up, everyone? In this video, I'm going to be talking about my process for exporting stems for music that will be used for sync. So music that's going to be placed in TV, commercials, other types of visual media. This is my process that I use and the process that most uh, production libraries will want you to use when you deliver music to them. Uh, this is not going to be the same process as sending stems to like a mixing or a mastering engineer or to, for collaborating. This is specifically for music that is intended to be used for sync. Uh, so let's get into it. Let's get to our DAW. I'm using Ableton Live. And the first step of my process is my template. So a lot of these tracks here are already in my template when I pull up Ableton for production. And what makes this template unique is that I have set up these uh, return routing tracks. And these tracks are my groups that will eventually turn into my stems. So in the mixing process, what I'll do is I'll take all my individual tracks and instruments and I'll route them to one of these return aux tracks and I'll use these tracks uh, when I export to bounce out my stems. So if you're using Ableton, uh, basically I'll take each track, I'll turn it to sends only, make the audio sends only, and make a post fader send to the return track that I want. So all of these tracks here are going to one of these returns, one of these groups. And uh, my returns here are pretty standard what most libraries will want you to have. Uh, each library or publisher will probably have their own guidelines for what stems they want and what they want them to be named. Uh, but this is pretty standard. And sometimes I'll have more than this. Sometimes I'll have less than this. The goal is to have less, uh, but still have it to make, still have it make sense for the song. So they don't want each individual track. They don't want each guitar, piano track individually. They want a group because what they're going to do is they're going to take your groups, your stems, they're going to arrange them into, into their own song, most likely when they're editing to video. So the least amount of stems is great, but you still want it to make sense for the song and you want there to be different parts. You know, you don't want to put guitars in the synth group. You don't want to put drums in, you know, the bass group. You want to make sure everything's separate, uh, but you don't want a million stems. You want like maybe seven, eight, less than 10 max for sure, depending on the track. So these are my groups. Um, and I'll bounce them out individually from here. So let's talk about what we should have on our mastering chain. So my mastering chain usually consists of Oxford Inflator, the API 2500 bus compressor, the UAD studio tape, uh, Poltec EQ, and Ozone 10. So a general guideline for this, and there couldn't really find a whole lot of information on this out there, which is kind of why I wanted to make this video, is that anything for tone, color, character, EQ can stay on. Anything that compresses or limits you want to take off. So going through my mastering chain, I'm going to leave on my Oxford inflator. I'm going to take off, I'm going to turn off my API bus compressor. That's going to compress. Um, I'm going to, for the studio tape, this could stay or go, really. There's some EQ things happening here. It's not compressing, so it's not going to hurt anything, but it's also not really being utilized without the full volume of the whole track going through it. So this one could stay or go. Uh, this kind of plugin, you can kind of make your own judgment call, but uh, it's fine if it stays, so I'm going to leave it on. Uh, my Poltec EQ can stay. I'm going to leave that on. And then in my Ozone 10, um, I'm going to turn off my maximizer, my mastering limiting compressor. But the EQ and the imaging can stay on. So really anything that's going to compress or limit, you want to take off. Um, anything that is EQing, adding color, character, can stay on because you still want it to sound as close to your original track as possible when you add up all those stems together. Um, but each stem isn't going to hit the compressor the same way, so you can kind of throw things off with that. So that's usually what I will leave on and take off. Now, if you want to do any compressing, 
Um, sometimes I will do that on the return tracks. It's safe to do that here. So if you want to add some light compression here, I'll add effects like this is usually what, where I'll put my reverbs and some more uh, tone color things I'll put here. But it's okay to do some light compression on these groups if you if your group stem overall needs compression, uh, but just don't have it on the master track. So once I go through my mastering chain, I decide what to take off, what to leave on. Um, I will play the song again and make sure that nothing's clipping, nothing's going over zero, because when uh, the video editor or music editor puts all of these you know, in their session to use. You don't want it, you don't want your track to clip with these individual stem, stems. So make sure nothing's going over zero. And then I will export. So using Ableton, using this method, what I'll do, uh, once I'm sure nothing's clipping, is I will take each group, I'll solo, and then I'll export the master track um, at 48 kilohertz, wave, 24 bit, sometimes 16, depending on the library. And I'll export and use whatever the naming protocol is of the library um, from there. Uh, but this is drum stem. Um, yeah, and I'll export from there. So I'm not going to play the track just to make sure there's no, uh, YouTube copyright things that happen because this track will, uh, most likely end up getting used somewhere for something. Uh, but that is the process. Now, something else you might be wondering with these return tracks, well, what if you use effects in these aux return tracks? What you would do then, let's say you have additional effects um, returns that you're using. Just make sure when you're bouncing your stems, you want to solo this and you want to solo the effects track that the effects are going through. So you get both of those in your stem. Uh, for me, usually I use insert effects on each channel, on each track, or again, I'll, I'll put them in the stem just so that or in these return tracks, just so that each stem can really stand on its own without uh, any kind of aux effects. Uh, but if you do use them, you can just use that method uh, for doing that. So that is the process. The last thing to do would be to take all of your stems that you export and put them in a separate session. And again, just make sure that everything is uh, exported correctly, each stem is exported correctly, and that, again, it's not clipping or going over zero when you play it back. Uh, and that's it, that's my process. So thank you for watching. Please like this video, subscribe if you want more content from me. If you have any questions, drop them in the comments below, or if there's something else that you wanna see, uh, let me know. Bye.